Welcome to this section of Unit 6 as we look at socially efficient and inefficient market outcomes. What we're going to look at here, and we're going to go back to pizza once again, we're going to look at uh, marginal cost, marginal benefit. We weigh the costs, we weigh the benefits. Uh, some of this uh, referring to marginal utility, uh, your, your satisfaction, uh, but we're going to apply it to marginal social costs and marginal social benefits in terms of what we see here. So we use pizza as this example. Um, we decide how many slices we're going to eat based on the marginal cost of what it costs uh, to actually eat the pizza, to, to buy the pizza, to pay for it. And then the marginal benefits we get from each slice that we are eating. Uh, we are trying to find where marginal cost meets marginal benefit. So if we're to eat three slices of pizza, seeing the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost, will we be at equilibrium? Well, the answer is no, uh, we wouldn't be. Uh, because in this case, our marginal benefit is greater than our marginal cost. We haven't eaten enough, we're still hungry. Uh, we're still uh, not satiated in terms of our satisfaction for that pizza. So we have a deadweight loss. Uh, if we eat too much, uh, we go with seven slices instead of, uh, of the three that we were looking at before. We go above and beyond what our equilibrium is. Uh, at this point, our marginal benefit is less than our marginal cost. Maybe we're nauseous. Uh, maybe we're uh, vomiting, maybe we are um, have indigestion, heartburn, whatever the case may be, we've eaten too much. And so we're not content. We're not happy with the, the equilibrium there because there isn't one. We've, 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 our marginal cost has exceeded our marginal benefit and therefore um, we have eaten too much. We've over allocated those resources. So we're looking for an equilibrium where marginal cost meets marginal benefit. And this idea of supply meeting demand at equilibrium in which we would eat five slices uh, at a price of $5 a slice. That essentially is our equilibrium in terms of what we see here. So we have the invisible hand of free markets that is at work. Uh, the idea here is that willingness to pay is important, that consumer surplus, as well as the producer surplus in terms of what's being sold. Now, uh, in a free market and in a perfectly competitive market, uh, we're price takers, uh, but there are incentives for businesses uh, to actually make money here. And so uh, they are competing with each other, offering lower prices, better quality, more variety in order to do that. Uh, and trying to make a profit in the in the process of, of making that happen, trying to find an efficient way uh, to be profitable as a result. So this is the idea of the free market. Uh, people get to choose what products they want to buy, what they want to eat, what they uh, what they don't want to eat. And so this determines society's needs, society's benefits uh, from this. And so government doesn't really get involved in this um, up to this point because it's the free, it's the invisible hand of free markets that is at work here. And that freedom is that also that freedom to uh, to sell, but also as a consumer, that freedom to buy or not to buy, uh, as we see in many cases. Now, does the market ever fail? Does the free market ever fail to meet society's needs? And we know that, uh, of course it does. Uh, of course, there are situations in which we see what we call market failure. Uh, this is when that invisible hand uh, isn't working like we thought it would, okay? Uh, and there is a failure uh, in terms of being able to meet the needs and, and the desires of what society would have it um, to do in those particular situations. Now, private markets uh, don't efficiently bring about the allocation of resources, and, and this uh, determines that market failure. Um, it may be beneficial for them from a private benefit point of view, um, uh, or a private cost, uh, but isn't beneficial to society, to that that idea of what society wants, the, the social benefits, the social costs. So government has to step in in some cases in order to uh, try and balance the scales in terms of what society wants and what uh, business can provide for them, especially when it comes to safety and security and other types of issues. So we see traditionally four market failures in, in terms of this area that we're going to focus on. Uh, we're going to talk about public goods in a future segment. Uh, you're going to see that coming up. Uh, in 6.3, um, but the idea of public goods and versus private goods, can we exclude people? Is it not rival or non-rival? We'll talk all about that. Uh, we also talk in uh, 6.2 about this idea of externalities, uh, the idea of a positive and a negative externality in terms of what's at work here. We're going to see, um, we're going to talk about monopolies, um, the role of monopolies, kind of a review of monopolies and what happens in that situation when we have imperfect competition. Uh, some of those uh, are arbitrarily 
created through natural monopolies as a result of government intervention, uh, but we see there's market failure there as well. And then we will close out this unit uh, looking at 6.5, the idea of inequality and the Lorenz curve, the idea of unequal distribution of income, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and the chasm uh, that is the canyon that divides the two continues to increase. So, uh, so we see a lot of situations in which government is going to step in in order to try and solve problems uh, by reallocating resources uh, that are there. And that's what we see in those market uh, failures. So uh, whether it's pizzas, whether it's aircraft carriers, whether it's building parks, uh, we're using supply and demand. The same concepts uh, that we've learned about uh, back in unit one in uh, chapters one, two, and three, trying to address that from what we call a marginal social benefit. Uh, what is the demand by society in terms of a benefit that society gets out of this? We're also going to look at the social cost, uh, the idea of, of the upward sloping supply curve, uh, the social costs that rise as we try and do more of these things. And where do we get that equilibrium uh, where marginal social benefit is equal to the marginal social cost? That is what we're striving for. Again, going back to the concept of MB equals MC, the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. The same is true here. Uh, it's the marginal social benefit that should be equal to the marginal social cost, what society wants, uh, demands, and supplies at these particular points. So if we look at a new park, for instance, uh, we have two citizens living in this uh, town, and it's Adam and Jill, and their willingness to pay is on the screen. We can see Adam is willing to pay up to $4 uh, for a park. Uh, Jill is willing to pay up to $5, but as you add additional parks, their willingness to pay actually declines, uh, and that leads to a downward sloping demand curve, um, uh, which is uh, what we talked about uh, here. Uh, the marginal social benefit is our demand curve, and as you can see, as you add additional parks, additional quantity, um, they're not going to be as happy about uh, parting with their dollars in order to provide a fourth or a fifth park or a sixth park, uh, as we see there. So um, some assumptions that we're making here with this park is that uh, right now we only have two people in this town, uh, Jill and Adam, and their willingness to pay becomes the market's willingness to pay in this environment. And um, additional parks, uh, all of the parks that were listed here in terms of the five parks we want to build, uh, they only cost five dollars. So um, uh, to, for simplification purposes, obviously, ceteris paribus, uh, the idea here is they only cost five dollars. So how can we address this in a way uh, that, we, that we will um, build enough parks uh, that will satisfy demand from society and not over allocate uh, resources? Uh, to produce too many parks, but also not underestimating uh, the amount of parks that, that society really wants here. So this is where we use the idea of marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost. Now we know the marginal social cost is the uh, cost of the additional park, that's five dollars. Um, but the marginal social benefit changes based on market demand. And we add up Adam's willingness to pay with Jill's willingness to pay, and we get the MSB, the marginal social benefit, or the, the downward sloping demand curve that we see here. So so marginal social benefit for one park is a willingness to pay $9. Well, we know it only costs $5 in order to produce each park. Uh, so we have a marginal social benefit that is greater than marginal social cost. Should we stop there? No, we should continue to produce. Where should we produce? Uh, at our socially optimal level, it is where MSB equals MSC, and that would be where they are equal at, at uh, three parks. $5 for marginal social benefit, $5 for marginal social cost. They will meet at three parks in terms of their willingness to pay and the, the cost of those parks. Um, and so this town is going to get three parks, not two, not five, but three parks uh, because the MSB is equal to the MSC here in this model. Now, uh, looking at this from a graph it out point of view, we see the downward sloping demand curve or the marginal social benefit. Uh, as you add more parks, the demand or the marginal social benefit is declining. And uh, we saw that due to what society wants. They uh, don't want more parks and they're not willing to pay for more parks as you keep adding more and more. So where do we find the happy medium at which um, uh, society is happy with that? Well, again, we know the marginal social cost is at five. So no matter where we're um, producing along here, we've got to go back to that $5 we talked about. That essentially, I know the numbers are a little off, sorry. Uh, that uh, determines the um, equilibrium. And in this case, uh, the supply is the marginal social cost at $5. It is uh, perfectly elastic or horizontal uh, because it is unchanged. Uh, it is not upward sloping. The costs don't rise in this case because every park Ceteris Paribus is $5.
So what we see here is the marginal social benefit equals the marginal social cost at three parks um, at $5 a park. And that essentially becomes our equilibrium, where MSB equals MSC. Now, um, if we were only to produce one park, as I said, we'd be inefficient. If we produced uh, four parks, uh, we would be producing too many. Uh, we would also be inefficient. Uh, so we have to look at where MSB equals MSC, uh, because that is going to lead us to the point at which um, we are producing effectively at that MSB equals MSC equation. In the next segment, we will look at externalities, positive and negative externalities, and talk more about them. We'll see you over there.